we're looking at a female impressionist artist and her work. Uh, one of the most important impressionist artists, Numericsa. And this piece, which is on the left on the screen, is called the coiffure, meaning the hairstyle. So a photograph of Mary is in the middle, and one of her great inspirations for the piece that she does, that's on the left, is a woodblock print from Japan. And so I included that on the right as a reminder that Impressionism is so deeply interconnected with Japanese art. So um, context-wise, and, and a lot of this is going to be repetitive from the discussion we did on Monet, uh, in 1890, the Ecole, which is French for school, the Beaux Arts, meaning the School of Fine Arts in Paris, had a, an exhibit and a showing of Japanese woodblock prints. And Mary Cassatt happened to be in the audience and she visited and had written, we have letters she wrote to her other female artist friends on how excited she was about this new kind of art that she was seeing from Japan. So um, from not necessarily completely from that point on, but it definitely kind of turned her art to a new direction for a time. And this piece shows that direction. Now one, I wanna remind you of the Yukioe images. Those are the types of woodblock prints that she is seeing. And so that means again, the floating world, uh, genre scenes capturing a moment in time that is fleeting. And so that's where she is getting that inspiration for this subject. Uh, also a reminder that ja Japan had opened up its trade to um, beyond just the Dutch in the 1850s. So everything uh, Japanese was in kind of coming into an inspiring European artist. So that term of Japanese may that we also went over in Monet. The other thing about um, this piece with context is about women since this is a unique piece and that we have not only a female artist, but a female subject matter that is typically painted by men. So one of the things, since it means the hairstyle, uh, it's showing a ritual of grooming, um, kind of dealing with the standard of beauty for women in the 19th century. And typically, and it kind of goes back to French queens and the aristocrats where you had would typically have women, like maids, lower class uh, on the social ladder, helping richer women get ready and do these elaborate hairstyles. And here you've got a woman alone doing her own hair. So it's an interesting kind of um, image that makes you think about who is this woman? Is she a working woman? Is she, uh, you know, kind of a not low social class, but lower, not aristocratic, not rich enough to have a servant. Um, that's a question that comes up. And it also makes you think about Mary Cassatt because looking at this image, you know, here she is painting, creating an art image about a woman in a home. And during this time period in the later 19th century, you had impressionist artists here, a couple of women making art, but their art is restricted typically to more domestic scenes, family scenes, interior of homes. Maybe they could paint something about going out to a party or a, an opera or something like that. But you, you didn't have the openness of subjects that the male artist had. So that's another aspect of this painting with context. And then something else that comes up with her and you know, a lot of times she's painting with paints like um, oil pastels and that. But here she's doing printmaking and she's documented in, in speaking about art should be for everyone. Everyone, regardless of your social standing, should have art in their homes. And she so she really embraced printmaking like etchings and other types of printmaking. So because it's less expensive. But then some artists critiqued her and said, you're devaluing your art because you're making so much of it. So make, making so many copies 
So they discouraged her from doing it, but she felt strongly in her passion about art being for everyone. So that's context, Japan, women, and then the printmaking and why she did that. So here are just some images that you see, some famous images of Mary Cassatt that she's done. And I thought it really hit home the idea that women were a little bit restricted of painting and doing subjects that were domestic. These are some of my favorite ones from her. And the one on the left is kind of a companion to Le Cafure. And I like the one in the middle, it's called the bath. And um, a mother is bathing her child, but clear Japanese woodblock print influence there. Uh, up above on the right, a woman, or two women having tea and then a family out in a boat. All very domestic scenes and appropriate at the time for women to paint. And in content here, um, definitely the qualities of CFID fit, that acronym I did with Monet, cropped. This, this scene is cut off. There's more to the room than what you're seeing. It is definitely flat, flatter than the Monet piece of the train station. So definitely more embracing those flat areas of color that the woodblock prints had from Japan. And because she's in cell herself doing a print, that fits here. That, that's why it works and, and is created in the way it is. She does a dry point etching, which helps you create this emphasis on line. And then she does what's called an aqua tint which is a printmaking technique that focuses on the different tones of a color to come through. So those two things, the dry point etching, which we've talked about with uh, Rembrandt, and aqua tint is new, and I would make that a vocabulary term. And one more term to introduce is the term intaglio. Intaglio is a word college board could use just to reference printmaking in general. Um, another word for printmaking. So if you see that term intaglio, it is a reference to printmaking. So we've talked cropped. Again, the room is cut off midway, so you're only seeing a fraction of it. It's flat. There's not a lot of modeling going on here. Um, like Manet, the skin tone of the girl here is very even. Again, uh, you know, just not a lot of chiaroscuro and modeling with light and dark contrast. Intimate, yes, I for intimate. It's a it's a private scene where she's in her dressing room doing her hair, and then D for decorative. I think all the you know, the lines on the chair or the stripes, the pattern on the rug, the pattern of the wallpaper, and you seeing those again in the mirror that's in front of her. Those all come from the Japanese kind of textiles and the Japanese prints that she was seeing. So I think CFID, you could use that and discuss all, you know, cropped, flat, intimate, decorative, all coming from the woodblock prints of Japan. The second thing about content here, besides the printmaking and CFID, is that this is a typical scene of a woman, and here she's partially nude, but you're seeing it from the lens and perspective of a, of a woman. So she is not sexualized in this image, even though she is partially nude. You don't have a man painting this, so it's not that erotic kind of presentation that you're used to, like in the Grand Odalisque or Venus of Urbino or those types of images where the woman is there to be enjoyed by a male gaze. You know, the viewer is male. The male is painting her. So there's a sexuality about her that is present that you don't have present here. And that most likely is because of the female perspective. Um, limited color palette, it kind of works into the flatness of the image. So going into that F of the CFID, I would link this to Vermeer with the voyeuristic kind of look to it. She's not looking at you, the viewer. She's engaged in her own activities. And then like these woodblock prints, these Yukioa prints, it's capturing this moment that is fleeting, that's not long lasting. 
and the cropped nature of it helps create that. The intimate, you know, the intimacy of it helps create that. You know, she is engaged in an activity that will end very quickly. And that is that moment of time that we are seeing. So I would use as um, formal qualities and function. And here, so you can see again, the similarities and look at the right hand side, the Japanese print, while I'm talking about the Mary Cassatt um, function and formal quality. Uh, formal quality, I would focus on pattern. Again, the pattern inspired by Japanese woodblock prints and these Yukioa images coming from Japan. You could do color. You have a very monochromatic color scheme, which helps flatten out the image. So therefore, you could also use space because the space is pretty flat overall. And then for um, function, definitely genre scene. Most UQA prints are. So I would say genre scene and also domestic scene. So again, that is um, quite a fabulous artist from the Impressionist era, Mary Ksat, painting this, or actually, sorry, doing the print make of this or the intaglio of this in about 1890. And she is one of the more important Impressionist artists and uh, one of the more important female artists that we study. And she's doing this dry point etching and aqua tint called the coiffure, the hairstyle. 